So today I'm going to show you how you can save profiles to the onboard memory of the Logitech G502 X Plus mouse. So about two weeks ago I purchased myself this brand new mouse and again it is the Logitech G502 X Plus. Um, Played about with it for a little while, just getting used to it and decided to start adding some of my own profiles into it and that's when I started getting a little bit confused with the G-Hub software. Um, the main issue that I was having was actually saving things to the, the onboard profile or the onboard memory of the mouse itself. Um, I could initially install or should say I could initially save profiles but then if I was making any tweaks to the, that particular profile I was struggling to try to actually get it to, to remember those changes. Um, jumped online and I could see there was quite a few other people on Reddit and so on having a similar issue and they were just slating the G-Hub software but I played about with it a little bit and I've actually got used to it and I'm going to show you how you can save these profiles to your mouse as well. So the first thing we're going to do is we'll jump over to another screen and I'll show you the G-Hub software. And just one thing while I remember, I've currently got the mouse set to onboard memory mode and I only have two profiles set up, one that I created for myself and then the other one's is profile 2 which is a default profile. So at the moment, hopefully you can see this in the camera, it's a kind of red and white um, colour here. Uh, that's my own profile that I've made up and then if I press the actual profile button you should change, see that changing to the, the kind of standard blue and pink uh, around the corner here. Uh, that's profile 2 which is a default profile. I just wanted to show you that because as I go through this video I'll show you the same thing again to actually prove that profile 3 is on this and the changes that I'm doing are actually saving. So as long as you have the Logitech G-Hub software all installed you should be presented with something similar to this that's on the screen at the moment. I've got a pull down bar at the top with all the profiles and stuff but we'll cover that in a second but here you'll have a list of all your Logitech devices currently detected by the G-Hub software. For me I've all got the mouse which is the G502X Plus, as I mentioned earlier. So what we can do is we can click in here and you'll then come to this screen right away. This is your screen for doing all your, your changes, um, all your personalization to your mouse. Uh, we've got sensitivity, we can change all the DPIs, delete DPIs, add more in DP, uh, DPIs, whatever you want to do. I'm not gonna cover that in this video, it's not about this, it's all about the, the onboard memory. Uh, we've got assignments, button assignments and so on, same again, we can, you can change that to suit yourself. Um, the last thing is the lighting, and for this video um, I will change some of the lighting just so that I can show you on the camera here that the changes are actually being saved or not saved, which might be the case. But what we need to do first off is if you are starting this for the first time you will create your own profile. Um, we we'll go down here, manage profiles and you can add profiles under any of the existing game profiles it's already here if you want to do that but for me I just do it as a, a desktop profile so down here we add a new profile we'll name it we'll just call it test for the purpose of this video and that's that profile created so if we now hit that back button up the top here we should see there is now a desktop test and so if we click on the test and to show you how this is actually working, I'll change the colour of this for the, the, the standard pulsar point colour that you're seeing at the moment, the, the purple and blue kind of flashing. We'll change it to something fixed and we'll, we'll, give, it a, we'll give it a green colour so it's kind of standing out. So hopefully you can see this on the screen at the moment, but that is actually green at the moment. Now a lot of people might think that that's it, job's done, it's going to save that profile. Um, but I'll show you exactly what happens is if you close this off, it will be sitting in your your tray um, down the bottom. And if we actually shut the G-Hub software down, which I've just done now, you will see that that profile was no longer on the mouse. It's disappeared, so what I've done there didn't actually save anything to the mouse itself. So we'll go back into the G-Hub software and I'll show you that again. The profile will still be there. Now this loads up you should see the green coming back in which it has done so that's the software retaining the information not the mouse and that profile is kicked back in again so there is now three profiles if we click back in the mouse this time we'll hit this little cog down the bottom corner to for device settings and you'll see over here onboard memory mode now if you click this on 
that it now allows us to select what we want to do with the different onboard um, memory slots. We'll click profile three, we'll scroll down or highlight the test one that I just created a minute ago and you'll see the little, little dashes letting you know that it's uploading that to the mouse. And now what I should be able to do is if I shut the software off again, just go down to the taskbar, close the software from the system tray. You'll notice on the screen, hopefully, it's currently on profile default. I've just clicked the button and then that third profile that I've just created, the test profile, which I highlighted green, is there. Press the button again and it goes back to my SB1, which is the one that I created for myself. Now that's simple enough. But what a lot of people are now falling victim to is if you go into the software again and for whatever reason you're maybe wanting to change some of the, the, key, the button assignments or the lighting or whatever again back on your mouse if you go into the mouse um, to change anything you need to turn off the memory mode which we'll do right now we'll go back back into the mouse we've already got the, the test profile selected and just for talk's sake, I want to change the colour. Don't like green. We'll change it to something else. And we'll go with... What will you see in the screen if I... Uh, we'll, we'll just go with this blue, right? We'll go with this blue colour. Um, yeah, we'll go blue. People think right away that that's it saved. You go back here. Go to device settings. Maybe if we turn that back on, that should do the trick. So the device setting is back on, we'll close the software down, back again down to the system tray, close it off, and people think that that's them, the, 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 the change has been saved, but it actually hasn't. So there you go, that's my SB1 colour you can see there, I've pressed the button again, that is the, the default slot 2, or profile 2, and if I press the button one more time you'll see that it's still green, that never changed anything. So I think that's what's catching a lot of people out. So for the last time, what we'll do is now go back into the Logitech G Hub. Just to let that load up. Any second now, we'll go back into the mouse. And while we're on this screen here, we don't need to go back into the profile at all. But test three, to actually load that up, for it to accept the changes, you need to actually re-pick the profile again or um, whatever you've created. So for instance, uh, this example, again, I will pick test and you'll see the little dotted lines in beside the test there. And that's letting you know that it's actually uploading that profile back onto the mouse. So final time, we'll shut the software down, down to the system tray, quit that. You can see my SB1 profile is set up. We've got profile two, which is a default profile, and now profile three, and you can see that the color has saved. So that's the thing that I think seems to be catching everybody out, is the, the fact that after you've made the changes, you go back, you turn the onboard profile on, um, and then you've got to reselect the profile for it to be uploaded to the mouse. Simple as that. Right, so I'm really, really hoping that that's all making sense to you. Um, if you've got any questions or anything, please feel free to ask me down the bottom. Hopefully I can help you. Um, and as usual, leave a like and a subscribe while you're there if you can. Um, so I basically showed you just color changes. Obviously, this same thing applies to any changes, whether it's changing DPI settings or changing key button, the uh, button assignment settings and so on. The main thing is always to remember is to re-click the profile to upload it back to the mouse. It just doesn't seem to be very well explained. Um, I think the software could probably be a wee bit more simplified to actually, I don't know, maybe instruct you to do that. But anyway, after a little bit of tinkering around, I eventually found it myself. So, uh, yeah, that's it. Hopefully it's helped you guys. And um, hopefully this applies to other mice as well, uh, not just this particular G502X, whatever, I'm pretty sure there's other mice that's got onboard profiles as well, and I'm really, really hoping the same thing applies to that as well, but yeah, keep talking.
keep rambling here. <laughs> That's another one done, and I'll see you again soon. See you later.